Josh Berry, Ryan Priest, Chase Briscoe, Noah Graxon. You can only keep two. Who are you keeping? So by now, everybody's heard the rumors that Stuart Haas Racing is going to downsize from four cars to two cars. Apparently, they have two charters available. And if that happens, that means they have to get rid of two drivers. They have a bit of a Sophie's Choice on their hands here, if you will. Maybe a little bit darker than I should have gone on a Saturday, but you get the idea of it. They have a decision that they are going to have to make, right? If they only have two charters, they have four drivers, two people got to go. So which of those four drivers are you going to keep, right? You have four drivers combined in the Cup Series. They have exactly one NASCAR Cup Series victory. That came with Chase Briscoe back at Phoenix in 2022, the very, very beginning of the Gen 7 era. So the question now is, if you're going to try to pair up the two best drivers that you have, which ones do you keep? And now, I know there's going to be a lot of comments. I've already seen them on TikTok of people being like, you got to keep Josh Berry and Noah Gragson because Dale Jr. is going to buy into the team, this and that. There's no evidence that that is absolutely going to happen. I mean, even this past week on his podcast, Dale Jr. didn't exactly sound like a guy that was ready to get into the charter-owning game. And just because those guys raced at JRM doesn't mean that they're going to go over there, right? It's like saying that William Byron's going to go back over to the Toyota family anytime that he's up for a contract because, you know, he was a Toyota guy to start. These guys just go where the opportunities are sometimes, and they're not built into the Chevy pipeline. They can kind of go wherever. Noah kind of ruined his chances with a Chevy pipeline, at least temporarily, and Josh Berry had to go where there was a good cup opening, right? And he was never a Chevy development guy. He's, I mean, 34 years old or 33 years old at this point. So of those four, which one are you keeping? Me, if I was making the decision, I would keep Josh Berry and I would keep Chase Briscoe. Let me... Hear me out before you come into the comments and you're like, you got to keep Noah Gragson or you got to keep Ryan Priest, this and that. You keep Josh Berry because over the first eight races that he's had with Rodney Childers on top of the pit box, they've made immense gains. I mean, they might not qualify that great sometimes. Richmond was a perfect example. Qualified 30th was running in the top five in that race just on straight up speed. They don't have the finishes yet. They haven't been able to put together that complete race. But even like Bristol should have had a top 10, if not a top five there. Tire strategy kind of caught them out there at the end. Same with Richmond. Should have had a top 10 finish. Didn't get it. Same thing at Martinsville, probably. If he doesn't get a penalty on pit lane, he's a top 10 car. So they have the speed in that four car. They just have to put together a complete race. Right now, his season average finish is 22.3. Average start is 22. Basically a net neutral. I'm not putting too much weight into that. We saw what he can do in really good equipment when he was at Hendrick last year. Three top 10s in his select starts filling in for Chase Elliott. Great for him there. Josh Berry is a guy that is mature. He can grow, develop, and yes, his cup career won't be as long as, say, maybe a Noah Gragson at this point, just based off of age, nothing else. But he's a guy that's already at that mature point. He understands what it takes to make a race car go fast. He understands that races are methodical, that you can't just be irrational out there at times, like we see with a lot of younger drivers, and they figure it out, and they're really good. Josh Berry's already at that maturity point. So I'm going to side with him. They've done a good job of tracking sponsors for him this year. They've done a good job of maintaining the sponsorships that did stay with the four car and with Stuart Haas Racing and working them into Josh Berry. He's marketable. He's personable. He seems to be doing everything that the team wants. You hold on to him. You also hold on to Chase Briscoe. I understand. He hasn't really done much over the last season and a half or basically since that win at Phoenix. However, his average finish this year is 15.9, 15.6. My bad. His average start is 14.8. So that's kind of a net negative one, which isn't ideal, but it is what it is. He has three top 10 finishes. And more often than not, that team can somehow manage to get a good finish out of a really bad day. Multiple times in 2023, we saw this team struggle completely out to lunch, be absolute dog food, as Jeb Burton would say, and somehow, some way, use strategy to somehow steal a top 10 finish or get another good finishing position. They can manage that. They're really good at that. He and Richard Boswell, although they may have yelled at each other on the radio and had a bit of a spat, do have a good relationship when it comes to salvaging races at this point. So I would hold on to him. He has great sponsorship relations, too, with Mahindra, as well as his sponsor, High Point. This team desperately needs sponsorship, and you can't just go ahead and cast out one of your main guys because you want to hold on to somebody else. You need money, so you're going to hold on to Chase Briscoe. You can piece together sponsorship for Josh Berry. You have sponsorship already for Chase Briscoe. You hold on to those, too. Now, people are going to be like, why aren't you keeping Ryan Priest? Why aren't you keeping Noah Gragson? Fair question. Let me just throw some numbers out there. And... 
this is just based off of this year alone. It's hard to gauge Josh Berry because he has never run a full-time NASCAR Cup Series season or really even more than a quarter of a season. So if you're just looking at Ryan Priest, since he's been in the Cup Series, at least at Sewerhouse Racing, hasn't really done anything memorable. Yes, he had a pole at Martinsville last year, had a good shot of winning that race if he didn't get a penalty on pit road. Since then, eh, he's been pretty much out to lunch. He does bring sponsorship money with United Rentals. There is that factor, especially if you're looking to keep money, maybe you hold on to him because he de does bring a decent amount. However, you do see a lot of Haas automation, Haas tooling on the side of that car, so it's kind of a mixed bag. But this year, he has an average finish of 19.9, an average start of 24.4. That is a net positive of four positions. That's good. One top 10 finish. So he does manage to salvage races. He's getting the most out of his car. I still don't think you hold on to him. We, we've we seen what he can do. I think Ryan Priest is the perfect example of a guy whose talent level is probably more situated for the Xfinity Series. And we saw him when he took that bet on himself, went down and joined Joe Gibbs Racing in the Xfinity Series for select races. He wins races. I think he's a guy that should probably be his career there. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think that more drivers need to kind of know where their career tops out at. And they can have great, long, successful careers in that series. Yes, I understand that the Cup Series is the top tier. Everybody wants to make it there. But if you can contend for championships and win multiple races a year in Xfinity or Truck, that seems way more enjoyable than running mid-pack to 30th in the Cup Series. That just doesn't seem that much fun. Ask John Hunter Nemechek. He demoted himself, went back down to the Truck Series, won a bunch of races, won up the Xfinity Series, won a bunch of races. Now he's back in the Cup Series in a much better position than he previously was in that 38 car. You can make an argument that if you held out for long enough that that 38 team would become tier one. Hard to predict the future. So Ryan Priest, although he has a good net positive from start to finish in his races so far this year, I'm still going to cut him loose just based off of previous uh, races. As well as like, yes, he does bring a little bit of sponsorship, but how long is that going to stick around? He doesn't seem that marketable outside of like maybe the Northeast and the modified guys. So no offense to Ryan Priest, he's out. The other one, Noah Gragson. He has an average finish of 20.4, an average start of 24.3. Again, a net positive of four positions. That's really good. Two top 10 finishes this year. He's had a lot of speed. He's had more speed seemingly than what Eric Almarola has had, at least through the beginning portion of the season. Eric Almarola, no diss of him. Again, a guy that probably should have spent his career in the Xfinity series. I think that he's done a remarkable job down there so far. And we also saw him win last year at Sonoma. People forget that because the race started at like 8 p.m. on the East Coast. Whatever. No Gragson, obviously he had a tumultuous rookie season in the Cup Series, ended up getting fired for liking um, a racially insensitive meme on Instagram. That'll bite you every time. Don't do that. That's a lesson to young drivers right there. He's done well this year. Don't get me wrong. He has brought sponsorship along with him. He has some sponsors, Black Rifle Coffee. He's also managed to bring over Bass Pro Shops, Ranger Boats as well, one and the same, and then has cultivated some other small partnerships that have been able to hop on for one race or whatever. At the end of the day, Noah Gragson does have a lot of speed. He does have a lot of talent. Is he a guy that you can build your team around? I'm just not 100% sure about that. I think that you have to take the two veteran guys, at least in terms of age, that you have. One with Josh Berry, you have the maturity there. Two with Chase Briscoe, you have the maturity as well as you have speed. I say maturity. He does tend to run into a lot of people. You put Chase Briscoe in a position to win a race at the end, and he's he's barnstorming right through him, and then he's going to get out afterwards and be like, I hate to race that way, even though neither of them won because he continues to make bad decisions. However, he does have speed when they have it. So I think you have to go with those two guys. No, Gregson's really good. He'll be good for somebody else. I just don't think that this is a situation for him if you're downsizing to a two-car team. If it's a say that a four-car team, yes, by all means, keep him because I think that he has talent. I just don't know if he's the project that everybody wants him to be just yet. We've seen what he can do last year, and it was really bad through the first oh, a little bit over half of a season. It was not good. Those cars definitely ran better in the second half of the year, so maybe he could have done better. But, boy, that Chicago street race will haunt him forever. I think that he's probably shaking. He's going to have weak knees, Eminem style, when he goes back to Chicago later this year for the street race because whew, he did not have a good time. So that's what I would pick. Let me know in the comments which two drivers you're keeping, which two drivers you're casting out. Like, subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.